Alistair Johnson is swapping his life as a Tesco store manager for something very different. Together with his fiancée, Debbie, they're chucking in corporate careers to indulge their love of the outdoor life. Indescribable. That's wonderful. They're going to run an upmarket tourist chalet in the French Alps. But they've got just two months to create a five-star operation. So we've no bug. They've never catered on this scale before. And all without the benefit of speaking French. possible pour la table dans autre dimension. Life in Britain was pretty good for Alistair and Debbie. Two decent salaries and a £420,000 townhouse in Hertfordshire. But two years ago, Alistair and Debbie took a skiing holiday in the French Alps, which sowed the seeds of change. My dream is probably to um, ski all winter and, and not do very much work. But uh, the reality of that would probably be that I'll get a little bit of dream and a little bit of reality. Inspired to do something different, they spent a year searching for the perfect property they could develop together. To start the whole thing from scratch is really part of the dream that, you know, to, can we really fulfill this? Are we able to achieve it? And in the most kind of beautiful, fabulous part of the world. I can't believe my luck, I actually keep pinching myself to think that this is happening. It's spring in the French Alps. Alistair and Debbie have come out to Chamonix for the weekend to close the deal on their new property. They've sunk every penny they own into the new venture. £380,000 has bought them a three-storey apartment block, a snowball's throw from the town centre of Chamonix, at the foot of Mont Blanc. Yes. Bedroom's upstairs, let's go and look at that. The rest of their cash and a mortgage will go on converting the three flats into one luxury chalet. These windows stay in. If all goes to plan, Debbie and Alistair could generate over £100,000 a year by offering a fully catered service in the ski season and bed and breakfast in the summer. So it's hard to imagine that in this six foot by four foot space we'll be catering for 14 people. England in July. Alistair and Debbie are both preparing for their last day at work. Certainly spending you know, three hours of your life driving to and from work every day is just not something I'd want to spend the next sort of five years doing, let alone the next 15 years of a career. So no, definitely time to move on, had enough. Alistair's worked for Tesco since he left school at 16. So good for, so good for doing tall things. I hate the whole process of getting up in the morning and putting suits on, putting the tie on, getting shaved, to be able to just make our own decisions and, and stand on for what we do is, uh, is going to be a real challenge, and, but something that we're really looking forward to, yeah. He celebrates the end of life in the aisles with a cleansing ritual, a last goodbye to the corporate suit. I'm going to enjoy this. Sure they have some ceremonial music going on in the background, I think. Same time. End of an era, the start of a new one. But before they leave for France, Alistair has something else to attend to. One last trip down the aisle. Their English wedding gives them a chance to say a final farewell to all their family and friends. Everything seemed to happen very quickly, getting together, and I think getting married and then sort of obviously, you know, going abroad as well. But I just think it's fantastic that it's all, you know, came together at the same time. What do you say <coughs> to her? Debbie, I give you this ring. Debbie, I give you this ring. I think Debbie's a, the, the driving force, the brains behind. I know Alistair won't, won't, uh, won't like me for saying that, but nonetheless, I really see Debbie as the driving force. But today is a day of dreams. Debbie's definitely the chatter, definitely. She'll get the guests and she'll have loads of friends coming over. And she'll probably do the cleaning and the cooking. God help us. <laughs> <laughs> They're going to be absolutely perfect in this. I think they're such fantastic hosts anyway. And the food's sometimes a bit interesting, but they've been working on that lately. Yeah, so. Practicing. Show me! It's what everybody would really, really like to be able to do. And, and those two have the courage to go and do it. And there we go. absolutely bloody good luck to them, really. And this time, the honeymoon could last forever.
Chamonix is about an hour's drive from Geneva Airport. Dominated by the great mass of Mont Blanc, its name's been synonymous with skiing since it hosted the first Winter Olympics in 1924. With its year-round snow-capped peaks, it's a mecca for rock climbing, snowboarding, paragliding, and mountain biking. A potential gold mine for anybody in the tourist industry. Trouble is, Alistair and Debbie aren't the only ones to have staked their claim. It's the valley of a thousand chalets and all for rent. Beating off the competition is going to be a challenge. As they reach the end of their long drive, the doubts begin to materialize. We've both had sleepless nights worrying about the finance side of it. Are we going to be able to cope together? Um, you know, that sort of intensity with each other all the time. Everything we own pretty much has been sunk into this property. So the biggest risk is that, God, what if we, we have to come back in six months because we're bankrupt? There's a final tunnel just as you come into the main Chamonix Valley. It's like just entering into another world that just opens up and it sends a tingle down the spine. Hey, look at that. Oh, it's amazing. I'm a bit nervous now, do you, about what it's going to look like? Oh my God, this is it. This is there the we road. go. Here we go. Look. Oh, oh, look, we've got a little cat waiting oh, to see us. Yeah. Well done, we made Come it. Come on. Yeah. 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 Mm. I can't believe it. Get out of this bloody van. <laughs> oh, my God. Welcome to our new home. <laughs> Quick, right, let's get hang in. Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. We're just married, my darling. <laughs> this is our new home. The happy couple hadn't seen the chalet for two months. <laughs> They're anxious to see the miraculous transformation the builders are supposed to have wrought in their absence. Oh, my God, it's a bloody building site. Oh, God, they haven't finished down here. <laughs> oh, wow. Ooh. Have we got any lighting? Oh, God, the lights work as well. Yeah. And the... Anything happened in our oh. bedroom? Our luxury ensuite bedroom. It's not the honeymoon surprise the newlyweds expected. I was a bit disappointed. I was hoping that more would have been done down here. But... Oh, this isn't finished. No, no doors on. But they said that the whole of no, the first not... floor had been completed, so... I don't think so. No. Oh, we were told that last Saturday it would definitely all be completed, and we were on bloody Tuesday, and it's not finished, so... Mm. It's a bit frustrating, really. Where's the dishwasher? I'm sure that wasn't the way we planned it. I'm sure that... Oh. Is that where oh, the okay, dishwasher's going to Yeah, go? dishwasher goes underneath there. going to be there. a dishwasher, yeah. thank God for that. Well, I think we need to go out and buy one. Oh, dear. The list of uncompleted tasks oh, is pages that. long. The tiles, well, it's not finished and it's not even bloody started. And so we've no bog. Mm. And there's no tiles, no sink. I wonder what the problem has been then. I'm sure they'll have some very good reasons. They'd better have anyway. Pascal, the builder, is behind schedule. Oh, right. The summer holiday season what, is just a month uh, away. What, do you know what the problem is? Debbie and Alistair insist right. that from now on he Do starts putting in the hours to complete the chalet on time. OK. Right. Okay. OK. On top of that, they've been let down by French Telecom. Despite promises, the chalet has no phone connection. <laughs> they've got to get a line installed. And this can be an uphill struggle wherever you live. But when you don't speak the language, it's a mountain to climb. How about you? Parlez vous anglais? A little. Um, we need a, a telephone line. Uh, no, we are um, the uh, nouveau um, owners. French Telecom says it could be weeks before the chalet is connected. At least Alistair thinks that's what they said. Cut me off. <laughs> Too complicated. Yeah. Cut you off? Yeah. What, is that, a, is that a gun or is that a holding? I think, she's too, I think she thinks we're taking the piss. They'll have to start their business without the use of a phone. No phone line means no internet. Debbie and Alistair are depending on their website to bring in bookings. It could have serious consequences. The priority is to get ourselves connected up to potential customers, so we need to get phones sorted, to be able to put the proper phone number on our website and things. 
That's where our customers are coming from, through, through the internet. So that's pretty high priority for us, yeah. Next morning, after their first night in their new home, Debbie and Alistair are awoken at 6.30 by the gratifying sound of builders hard at work. A few minutes later, 14 beds are delivered. Once the business is up and running, they'll have to make these same 14 beds every day. Debbie is not one of nature's early risers. Debbie, get enough? Debbie takes it from getting out of bed to being ready, she takes an hour. <laughs> Too hot. Hair, makeup, everything. But it's worth it in the end, isn't it? <laughs> it's harder every year, I tell you. Debbie and Alistair have no time to lose. Their shopping list includes four sofas, a couple of dozen chairs, and a dining table big enough to seat 14 people. What's up? Two of them would be good. Parle vous anglais? Non, pas trop. Oh. Is it is it est-ce que c'est possible pour la table dans autre dimension, une autre length? Debbie manages to resolve the size issue. But there's a problem with delivery. The shop can't promise the table will arrive in time for the start of the season. Debbie and Alistair's first week has been a testing time, fraught with the disappointment of an unfinished chalet and the strain of trying to kickstart their business. But for now, they've got an escape route right on their doorstep. Absolutely fantastic. Suddenly realizing this is it, we're here. And it just feels absolutely right. Cheers. Our cheers. First, first trip up the mountain. Yeah, cheers. Still feels a little bit unreal, but it hasn't sunk in fully for me. No. Yet. No, not yet. But I suppose at the moment it's all the preparation stations. It's just the two of us. Apart from the builders that are crashing around all over the place around us. We've forgotten about that. Yeah. <laughs> but the honeymoon in the hills won't last long. With the summer season around the corner, the cash starts to drain away as the builders try to finish on time. Alistair struggles to bring in the bookings. You know, it's nice to have a nice site, but it's bloody useless if nobody can, um, can get in and look at it. And it's crunch time as the chalet comes under close professional scrutiny. We have to be careful how we sell this room in that the head height's quite low. Yeah, it's a bit of a scramble to get under there. Alistair and Debbie have been living in Chamonix for two weeks. Alistair's new routine will be light years away from his old life among the trolleys and checkouts at Tesco's. When the guests arrive, it'll be Alistair's job to fetch the breakfast as each day dawns. His in-store bakery counter was never like this. The croissants with bread. Oui. And baguette. Just something Merci. quintessentially French about going to the boulanger in the morning and getting croissants and, and, um, and baguettes, and it's still warm, it's oh, beautiful. Mm. Bonjour, monsieur. Bonjour. Bonjour. Ça va? Oui, ça va. Alistair and Debbie are already relishing a fresher, cleaner lifestyle. It's miles away from the grind of the bumper-to-bumper -bumper daily commute. Just be, well, what would we be doing? I'd be frantically running around late as usual, but um, on the way... Well, you, wouldn't be, to, you wouldn't be up by now, normally. Would. Just be back to get in... Well, I'd be in the car, wouldn't we? Sitting on the A40, going nowhere, stationary traffic. After Debbie and Alistair read the riot act, Pascal and his team are working all hours to have the chalet ready for the start of the summer season two weeks away. The whole of Chamonix is gearing itself up for the big invasion of thousands of tourists, attracted by the fresh air, warmth and stunning alpine scenery. Food is an obvious lure for the tourist, and Chamonix has more than its fair share of high-priced restaurants and shops. But Alistair's a supermarket man, and he knows when you're cooking for 14 guests, you can't afford to pass up a special offer. 11.89. It's great. Amazing, isn't it? The package Debbie and Alistair's guests can expect will include not just breakfast and afternoon tea, but a four-course evening meal, all six right. times a week. So this is where we're going to have a problem with storing fresh fruit and veg, oh, aren't we? So, what we're going to do with it all. So, so, but Debbie and Alistair are complete culinary novices. 
how does it compare price wise I'm to gonna Tesco? Clue. No idea. Oh, I'm good man. We don't know the price of um, no, green peppers no, at home. Bloody don't know the price of green peppers at Call home. Call yourself a store manager. The guests will also want something hearty for the start of the day's skiing. What, what do we like to do for breakfast? So well, I've, croissants, I've, I've, I've bread, yeah. yogurt, yeah. cereal. Yeah. Maybe a bit of fruit. Yeah, well, porridge would be good today. Porridge would be. People want porridge, and we could have a bowl of porridge on all the time. People still eat porridge. Yeah. <laughs> Debbie and Alistair have got to make Four their budget stretch to giving litres. the guests unlimited wine with the evening meal. Yeah, so three pounds for five litres. That's it. Get 50, a few of them. Fifty p a litre. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there's that. There's so, that cheese, Tom. That's their menu have. plan will it's contain some local oh, specialities. Oh, just look at it. It looks like local, Stilton, isn't it? Local. Well, hopefully, people appreciate. Yeah, we can tell a bit about the we... local area. There's all the food locally is ham and cheese derivatives, so it's nice to be able to offer some of that. But we'll and tell it's... them that we've tramped up the mountain personally to this farm yeah, that we know. milked the goat. <laughs> it's over two weeks since French Telecom promised Debbie and Alistair a phone connection, but the line is still no, dead. This is the, um, it's completely different in France because it's uh, doing things in the UK. This is the phone connection, yeah. I think, I hope. In theory, something should be happening now. Is there a line or not? Presentation de la parelle. No, it's all in French. There's nothing there. So, I don't think we've got a line yet. Really? Right, so we haven't got a line, great. No phone means no marketing and no bookings. It's more than a bit of a setback when the summer season is about to start and you've got a business to get up and running. Alistair's had to go back to commuting to his temporary office down the road. He's got to get the bookings in. I'm uh, unfortunately phoning from a phone box outside the chalet because, um, you know, the problems that we've been having with the phone, well, it's, uh, it's still not uh, installed. It's more of the day after we should touch wood with everything, but uh, we should be sorted out. We'll see you then. Cheers, Dan. Bye. A bit frustrating, this Alistair. Yeah, it's. Uh, well, I mean, I suppose the positive thing is good we've got a phone box that's so close because it's just something I that's only like 200 yards walk away, but it is so oh, bloody annoying. We've got five phone points, we've got three telephones we've bought, we've got a computer, and the whole lot is completely bloody useless. I know Deb's getting a bit annoyed about it because she can't speak to her friends, and so, uh, yeah, it's getting a bit, a bit fraught. <laughs> It's now mid-August in the French Alps. The town is bursting with 100,000 visitors. The good folk of Chamonix couldn't be happier. But for Debbie and Alistair, it's just galling. They still have the builders in with a long list of outstanding jobs. There's no plumbing and the carpentry is unfinished. I must ask him what he's doing with this, because that was all done and they pulled it all off. I'm sure that's still going to be boxed in. I can't believe they're going to leave it like that. So I'm going to put some um, wood around there. The boiler needs replacing. There are walls of tiling still to do. And the electrics to worry about. There's no way Alistair and Debbie will be open for the summer season. Because the builders are taking longer than we thought they were going to take, and they said they were going to take, then we've, we've had to turn away um, business. So we've had quite a few inquiries about summer business and we can't take any money because the builders are still here. Plus, of course, you know, money, we, of course, we yeah. need the money. I mean, we, we work, we'd sort of got a rough um, business plan and the summer season is so short, it literally only lasts for about six to seven weeks maximum. So if you don't get your money in those few weeks, then there's very little business in the latter part of the year. Essentially, we've missed the summer season now. The delays have cost them nearly £10,000 in lost income. And, even worse, the building work has gone £16,000 over budget. They're also discovering that apart from the 50p a litre wine, most things in this ritzy mountain resort are a great deal more expensive than they'd anticipated. The bills are mounting, income is zero, and every precious euro has to be accounted for. So it's not a bill, that's just for information, that one. Is it? Well, yeah. it's money that is owing. Yeah, but September, October, November, extremely sort of quiet, so you can assume 
well, we've worked on the basis that worst case scenario, you don't get any revenue in those months. You know, that's that's the uh, the frustration. So we're just living on on the earnings that we've got to, that we've got in our bank account, really, which is not a good way to no. to do things. In England, they were dinkies, double income, no kids. They're not used to watching the pennies, but now it looks as if they'll have to eke out their dwindling savings until the start of the winter season. There is, however, some good news. Hello! How are you? With the phones now connected, Alistair can finally get online to check up on his website. But he's discovered that none of the internet search engines can find it and the automated booking service keeps crashing. Potential customers are getting lost in cyberspace. The real main thing, I mean, in terms of the call, is, is to sort out this search engine thing. You know, that's what we've paid for, isn't it? I mean, it's nice to have a nice site, but it's bloody useless if nobody can, um, can get in and look at it. Can you come back to me today and let me know? At this particular moment, it's our only outlet back to the UK or to, to whatever country we're going to get guests from um, to, to get us business. So it's probably the most important piece of equipment in the chalet, really. Having missed out on the summer season, Alistair and Debbie are desperate to make sure that the chalet will be fully booked for the crucial winter holidays. With no other option, they decide to get some help. They're hoping Bigfoot, a local tour company, will pull in some business, but it'll be at a cost. Debbie and Alistair will have to sacrifice up to 50% of their income in commission to Bigfoot. It's either this or be empty. But before they take on the property, Bigfoot insist on a full inspection to check out the quality of the chalet. Yeah, it's a spacious balcony as well. Nice. Right, let's go and have a quick kitchen. scoop around some of these We don't rooms. care about the kitchen, that's Debbie and Alice's problem. <laughs> yeah. All the doors are all fire doors. Yeah. You're right. Okay. Okay. Right, next. We have to be careful how we sell this room in that the head height's quite low. Yeah, it's a bit of a scramble to get under there. I mean, I'm only six foot one or something and my head's hitting here, so... It could be the lifeline Debbie and Alistair need to kick-start the business. <laughs> It's outstanding. It? It's yeah. going to be really, really nice. Things that particularly impressed me, uh, quality of woodwork, mm. fantastic. S bedroom size, beautiful. Right. Uh, I think most of them are ri some of them are really nice sizes, very right. good. Uh, and then, of course... Things the result are gives Debbie and Alistair a much-needed morale boost. <laughs> we could do extremely well with this, Shelley. Uh, this, this actually coincides totally with our client profile which is basically people that earn a little bit more money that are willing to pay that little bit more to have that bit better service and a bit better quality of accommodation. Cheers. 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 But Debbie and Alistair are not out of the woods yet. Future success. In a month's time, they're forced to return to London to drum up business. The fact that we've made this huge financial investment and, for example, still haven't got the Christmas week booked. And a trial run for 14 people puts their novice catering skills to the test. From the cooking and the food point of view, there's a bit of a disaster. It's the middle of October in Chamonix. The autumn mists bring chillier days and the first hint of winter. Debbie and Alistair have at last said goodbye to the builders, but it's cost them. The dream chalet has come in at a scary £16,000 over budget. Their dwindling savings have taken a big dent and now the projected profits will be well down. The results, though, are impressive. Alistair and Debbie are depending on a local tour operator to help promote the chalet and keep the business afloat. Bigfoot's latest ski brochure is hot off the press. The seven-bedroom chalet provides maximum comfort with all rooms en suite and large balconies affording stunning views of the Mont Blanc chain. With mouth-watering meals and helpful advice on all the activities in Chamonix. There's, there's literally no turning back now because um, um, we're, in, we're in the brochure website's up and running, so it feels like uh, it's all happening. Despite the double-page spread, Debbie and Alistair still have no bookings for the crucial Christmas holidays. It's time to pull out all the stops and find some business. Kensington Olympia in London, home of the biggest ski show in Europe, a mecca for ski bums and board freaks. 
Debbie and Alistair are launching a charm offensive on potential clients. So what was the sort of dates you looked at, say mid-January? Trying to make an impact is more difficult than either of them had imagined. Well, good luck anyway, yeah. Nice to meet you. The competition is awesome. It is a bit nerve-wracking, because you almost feel like you've got to go out and grab all the people and they come at you, we want to have a chat with you because we want you to come and stay at our chalet. The target for the next seven days is to ensure the chalet is full for the busy Christmas holidays and drum up trade for the rest of the 18-week season. So we do, we do everything we do. I think if we go away at the end of the seven days without some definite bookings, we'll be really disappointed. And then I think I'll start to feel a bit more nervous about the fact that we've made this huge financial investment and, for example, still haven't got the Christmas week booked. Yeah, it brings home the fact that it is such a, a hard competitive environment. After a week of hard selling, Debbie and Alistair have no confirmed bookings. They head home to the Alps and hope the phone starts to ring in the next two weeks. While they wait to hear news from the ski show, they've decided to test themselves as hoteliers and chefs. Fourteen friends have been invited over to act as guinea pigs on a trial weekend. It's a battle. Three done. Seven more to go. They'll practice cooking a sumptuous four-course evening meal, act as hosts, and do all the cleaning themselves. Finish off. Let them know we've been in the place and done it. See what, madam? Your room is ready. The first time we will have cooked for that number of people. So Get fire extinguishers at the ready. Yeah. <laughs> every single room is going to be used, so we're having to make up every every bed. Um, get all the duvets out that have been sitting sitting there waiting. And it's, 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 one, it'd be nice to have the place filled up and being used for what it's supposed to be, supposed to be. And, and, and two, it's a good test to just uh, to see how it all works out, really. Uh, I'm sure they'll absolutely love the place. Um, and it's really then just whether they like the cooking and the kind of hospitality and things that we provide as well. But, but more, more kind of um, excitement, I suppose, than anxiety. Because like Alistair says, just can't wait to get people in and... Um, you know, get the place being used for what it's meant to, rather than us rattling around here on our own. With money tight, a chalet girl to help is out of the question. Yeah, As their friends arrive, Debbie and Alistair switch into host mode. Three nights, actually. Hello. How are you? They'll have to get used to this. During the ski season, accommodating smiles will be essential wear, day in, day out, for 18 weeks. Tomorrow, Alistair will cook a four-course meal for 14 people. It's something he's never done before. The skies are clear, the air is crisp. Debbie takes the friends on a sentimental journey showing them the views that first inspired her and Alistair to up sticks and move to Chamonix. As part of the package for paying guests, she will have to be on hand with knowledge of all the local attractions. <laughs> Alistair's view for the rest of the day will be the four kitchen walls. He plans to try his hand at French onion soup, a roast, and then for pudding, creme brulee. Oh! Not started yet, but already his timing's gone woefully awry. You need to start the recipe the day before so that the custard can be well chilled and firm. Ah, oh dear. Always prepared to improvise, Alistair's thought of a way to speed up the setting time. Well, it works for gravy. Debbie desperately wants the weekend to be a success so that her friends will spread the news. Oh, it's the fire alarm system. They've put it in the kitchen and it's so sensitive. The recipe says that creme brulee should be served in small ramekins and shouldn't be the consistency of porridge. Rig! Ow, Alistair. Uh, go ahead. 
Can you hear me? Yeah, just about. Let me just come out of the balcony. It might be a bit clearer. Is it? Are you all right? Do you need any help, or is it all under control? All under control, of course. Right. I can come back if you need any help. No, no, you carry on. Over and out. All right. Oh, bye. At least the scenery comes up to scratch. Alistair and Debbie's spectacular back garden views are the envy of all their friends. I think it's absolutely stunning. It's so beautiful up here. and it, You forget when you're in England and you're in your day-to-day -day job and drudgery that places as beautiful as this exist. And just to have the courage to pack it all up and come here is just fantastic. And I don't think you could get bored here. I really don't. Adding to Alistair's rising stress levels is the discovery that part of the ceiling in their apartment downstairs has collapsed. It's glad there wasn't the creme brulee underneath it at the same time. Plaster a la creme brulee. The main party returns from their day out, happy, relaxed, mellow. Alistair, on the other hand... Oh, don't do this to me! Get in, you fucker! There you go. Won't come out again, but it's in. Well, why do you feel a bit bad, though, going off out of the mountain? Well, no, you in the kitchen no, slaving away. No, the great thing is to find out how long it takes to do it, isn't it? Yeah. That's the really key thing about it. you spend virtually the whole day doing it? Yeah. It was, where, where are we going to fit in the three hours skiing, then? That's nice. <laughs> and yet, despite panic, fire alarms and structural mayhem, food appears on plates. Alistair's critics get their chance. Critical recommendations, please. Anybody like? We like the string. <laughs> <laughs> it's all part of the authenticity. Yeah, yeah. Courgettes. Courgettes are overdone. Yeah. Well, they're burnt. <laughs> Alistair's creme brulee fares no better. The sugar topping should be a light golden colour to form a thin crust on the top. It's a disaster. Mm. Look, you think I've slightly burnt the sugar too much? Oh. Is that a cork? <laughs> <laughs> Does anybody want a creme fraiche to go in it? Just to... No. Nope. Early the next morning, a post mortem. Things are never going to go perfectly the first time you do them, but I think probably the most important thing is not to make the same mistake twice. Yeah, there's quite a lot of things that, that I picked up on that, that were you know, obviously not right. You know, the presentation of the creme brulee at the end was just dreadful. We didn't have the right things to put it in. Um, I didn't time it properly because I could have, should have cooked it the day before. I didn't look at that properly. The need courgettes would look like charcoal. Mm. Definitely room for improvement. I agree, there were things that were a bit overdone and um, you know, some of the food could have been a bit better. It's quite difficult when you've got friends for a, for a test because they're not going to be quite as honest as, um, as a paying guest will be. With the trial run over, Debbie and Alistair realise there's a lot to do if they're going to compete with the professionals. It's two weeks since Debbie and Alistair went to the London ski show. They've now heard that the sales trip didn't produce the flood of bookings they hoped for but the chalet is booked for three weeks over the Christmas holidays. At last, some financial relief. But Bigfoot, the tour operator, will take up to half of that income in commission. Primarily, we'd like to see more bookings of our own. We? We've got, of the, of the bookings that we have got, probably about 80%, we say, is um, bookings from tour operators. But it'd be good to see a few more. I mean, you spend a huge amount of money in a place like this with the, the obvious hope that you're going to be able to take uh, lots of bookings and get lots of people in, but it's uh, it's obviously a gamble. We've got to make sure that we really get it right and that we get people to come back again. Oh, God. In two weeks' time, when the ski season kicks off, yeah. the real yeah. test begins. Alistair and Debbie come face to face with the challenge of catering for a chalet full of guests. Just to cook it for another bloody hour. Seven days a week, 24 hours a day, for 18 weeks on the trot. Knackered, very knackered. It's early December. Debbie and Alistair's first paying guests arrive in Chamonix in just two weeks' time. The brochure promises luxury surroundings with mouth-watering meals. 
their clients' expectations will be high, and Debbie and Alistair have got to get it right now. A bad start will jeopardize future bookings. Already, there's only one word to describe Alistair's state of mind. Panic, really. <laughs> Not so much panic, but I'm far off, because you just think, well, these people are driving all the way up from, from the UK just to come here, to stay with us for a week in December, which is a, which is a risky thing to do to begin with. Is the food going to be right? We've been practicing it, but is it going to be right? The pressure is on to make sure Chalet Blanche is run as a top-class professional operation. So we need a start at... Oh, no. no. We've got pumpkin soup, okay. so that's fine. That's fine. Then we just do Alistair and Debbie are and novice chefs, so they're scouring cookbooks in search of simple, high-quality recipes to impress their hungry skiers. Also, they realise they need extra space to cater on such a large scale. So, as well as the cramped upstairs kitchen, they're going to use the larger one in their own apartment. The only drawback is that this puts a flight of stairs between oven and table. Most other chalet owners employ help. Debbie and Alistair can't afford such luxury. It's a risk, but they've decided to do everything themselves. The snow falls bang on cue. After two weeks of rehearsal and preparation, the first paying guests are on their way. Oh, God. Excited, because this is what it's all about. This is why we're here and the first guests are about to arrive, but very nervous about how it's going to be. Yeah. Right. Better go down and meet them. Everything's under control. The eight guests arrive at eight o'clock, hungry and tired. There's a double room and a twin room on this floor. And then They're spoiled for choice, there. with seven en suite rooms to choose from. Yeah. Alistair's already hopping nervously from task to task. <sighs> if the soup goes, it might be a little on the thick side. The leek and potato soup is to be followed by a wholesome beef in red wine casserole, served on a bed of rice. What do they think of the soup? Oh, it seems to be going down a right. Did you like the candles on the table? No. Oh. oh. You're ahead of that sort of thing. No, but I wasn't there, so, all right, that's a bit of a well, disappointment. Well, neither was I. Well, who served the soup, then? The casserole's ready to be ladled onto the bed of rice, but there is no rice. They've forgotten to cook it. Oh, shit. What? What? Rice. Oh, yeah, oh, God. No rice. It's got the rice, oh, God. It's 20 minutes, isn't it? Yeah, oh, shit. <laughs> Keeps you fit, this job. The main course is late, but the guests, happily anaesthetised by the unlimited wine, have barely noticed. <laughs> It may not be haute cuisine, but the casserole goes down well, and Debbie heaves an exhausted sigh of relief. <laughs> Hopefully it's all right. It was just a bit, uh, a bit frantic behind the scenes. <laughs> 1 a.m. The guests are tucked up in bed, but Debbie and Alistair have to spend another two hours clearing away, washing up, and then laying the table for breakfast. Having barely had time to close her eyes, Debbie drags herself out of bed to do the early morning shift. Alistair's daily trips to the boulangerie have fallen by the economic wayside. Frozen croissant and baguettes from the supermarket are cheaper and easier. <laughs> In theory, anyway. Burnt bread. Oh dear. Bread's a bit burnt. Plenty of croissants. The bread has to be binned, but the guests are none the wiser. Oh, mm. They're a little bit um, hot, so carefully touch them. Have a good day. Right, we're going to get Alistair out of bed. The guests leave at 8.30 to enjoy a day on the slopes. Debbie and Alistair are stuck with the mountain of chalet chores. Yeah, the life of a chalet gal. Doesn't get much better than this. Every day, for the 18 weeks of the season, their new life will be a furious round of cleaning, bed-making, 
and ensuring there's plenty of firewood. There's a freezer and larder to be kept fully stocked. There's still the pressure of trying to bring in the crucial bookings for the rest of the season. There's two fresh cakes to bake each day. And of course, always remembering to smile for the guests. Hiya. Yes. How are you? All right? Yes. Had a good day. Yeah, we had a very good day. The long days and nights roll by with endless vegetables to peel, dishes to grill, boil, roast, stew, plate up and serve. By the end of the week, Debbie and Alistair have made 52 beds, cleaned 60 toilets and cooked up 200 portions of food. They've worked over 100 hours in just one week. The exhausting schedule is taking its toll. So how do you feel? Knackered. Tired. Knackered. There's no respite. When they left England, the dream was to get up on the piste every day. In the cold light of reality, such dreams are melting away. To mark the end of the first week, Alistair's trying something ambitious he's seen in a cookbook. Yeah, this, this one's a bit more um, a bit more to it rather than, I think we just wanted to do a roast to pick this one out because it seemed a bit more colourful and interesting and fun. And so I'm going to try and get that to sort of stay in there without them all escaping every time. Pork stuffed with peaches is a dish he's never tried before. Debbie's been on the go for 12 hours, but at tea time she still manages to rustle up another of her cakes and yet more smiles and a bit of spin. You might think, oh, it's sunk in the middle, but actually it's, it's trying to recreate the Chamonix Valley. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Alistair's fallen foul of the cookbook. He's religiously stuck to the temperatures and timing given in the recipe, and mysteriously the whole thing's cooked in no time at all. She has to cook it for another bloody hour. But it, the skin's already black. I don't exactly want to um, have the thing completely overdone. The pork's ready inside and out. But the guests aren't. Burning It'll have to be put aside while they tuck in to their starters. <laughs> It'll taste good. I'm mostly covered over with gravy. <laughs> It'll be all right. Once again, the backstage panics go unnoticed. The meal gets to the table looking good and bang on time. How do you feel about that then? That went really well. Oh, I feel absolutely knackered, but it was... What could have been a disaster actually ended up pretty well. Yeah, it was we'll find fantastic. We'll out, find out yes. what, they, what they say in the end. Really good. They've had to learn. They've stolen recipes from all over the place and they've delivered them to the table in excellent order. So, uh, yeah, they've blagged it well. Better than we expected, really. I think they welcomed us with open arms. They made us very, very comfortable and very friendly. I think they'll do brilliantly. They're superb. Hello. Rib service. It's changeover day. The worst day of Debbie and Alistair's week. The conveyor belt just never stops. Go on, then. Action stations. Oh, happy it's Monday. nine o'clock. We've got new people arriving in two hours. We've got to scrub, clean the place and get the rooms ready. There you go, then. Off the hook for a moment, they steal time to put their feet up and have a cup of tea. It's the first break they've had together all week. Sitting, relaxing time is, um, is a dim and distant memory. If you're not doing cleaning, you're doing cooking, or you're baking cakes, or you're out shopping, or you're... There's always, always something to do. There's no sort of cut-off, and, and because it's all here in our home, you think, oh, I'll just, I'll just have a quick look at that, or I'll just so quickly start that. So you just never switch off. Then it's back to the rubber gloves. Perhaps a chalet girl would have been a wise investment. I think we ought to do an extra pair of hands on these changeover mornings, especially when we're late to clearing people out, because um, we're going to... Oh as fast as we can physically go. We've got people turning up in any minute now. 
and we've still got uh, half the bloody rooms to finish. Hi there. Hi there. Eleven a.m. The next nine guests arrive, and Debbie and Alistair swing into week two. It's an 18-week slog. One down, 17 to go. It'll be April and the end of the season before they can finally get off the relentless merry-go-round of running the chalet. Hello, nice to meet you. Alistair, how are you? Christmas Day in the Alps. For Alistair and Debbie, apart from the cards on the mantelpiece, it's just another rubber glove day. There we go, showtime. Fun starts now. Put your hands down, those toilets. Flying, flying. Once the chalet's been scrubbed, there's still Christmas dinner to cook, with all the trimmings for nine people. Hi, <laughs> Christmas, my darling. The guests have invited Debbie and Alistair to join them for the celebrations. Their first sit-down meal since they opened for business. It's been really good. Yeah. Really hospitable. Very friendly. It's very cosy, and the fire's always on. And it's a nice atmosphere. Anything to find fault with, I, I can find fault. But they've been great. Well, yeah. off your time is well. But Debbie and Alistair still get left with the washing up. Boxing Day. Debbie and Alistair get their Christmas treat. They promise themselves a few precious hours on the slopes. It's their first chance to escape the chalet chores. Six months ago, they left England for good and took a huge financial gamble. The chalet's only half booked till the end of the season, and with money lost through building delays and hefty commissions to the tour operator, they've only just broken even. But the real bottom line is, is this the life they dreamed of? Slightly harder physically. Everything takes a huge amount of time up and there, there, there is never a time where you're not moving on to the next thing and looking at your watch, you know, getting enough sleep in is, has become a slight problem. Despite the fact of being hard work, we have a lot of laughs along the way about, you know, some of the kind of blunders that we've made and, and some of the successes as well. I think in terms of whether we've have we achieved our dream or not, 100% for me. I mean, it's, it's turned out to be in the short space of time we've been here everything I could have imagined it would be, and, and more in a way. You know, we can't really ask so much more than that. To be able to work in a place like this, to be able to earn our living in a place like this is just fantastic, absolutely fantastic. 